the, the restaurant thing in the back. Uh oh. Lost. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The Terminators are coming. What's so, up, everybody? Uh, Welcome. Welcome back, and thanks for joining me on this newest episode of Evolving with Corey Castle. Uh, I'm Corey Castle. Still in quarantine, joined by my longtime brother, very good friend. Love this man very much. Like a brother to me. <laughs> hey, country. Mitch, what's up, man? Hi, everything's cool, man. Like you said, quarantine. Yeah. Quarantine life. Yeah. <laughs> you, know the, you know, the. as soon as it's over, the divorce lawyers are going to make a bunch of money, and the uh, pregnancy wards are going to be flooded, so... You think that this is going to cause a lot of divorce and pregnancies? Well, people like my, like, I, I know a couple of folks, and I'm not going to name names, that they just can't be left alone in isolation too long. <laughs> I and, didn't even think of that way. Well, and most of them are relatives, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, so maybe you want to leave out the names to protect the innocent, uh, yeah. or not so innocent, however you want to say. <laughs> so, man, uh, I just, I, uh, I think, long. yeah, um, I wanted to get into talking about it, and I want to see if, if you remembered this, but I know once I decided that I wanted to have you on the show, cause I know I, I, I was made feel guilty when, when you, <laughs> when you made the, when you made the, the anniversary uh, video for the ra- Russell rock anniversary, yeah. you were like, Oh, when I came on, it was just Rick. I thought Corey was my friend, but uh, <laughs> it's not friends anymore. <laughs> but I, my memory of you, like my first memory of you is like, we, we did a show in some ballpark in Delaware. That was like the first time I met you. Uh, that might've been when I was under house arrest. Yeah. And you wore the ankle bracelet under your wrestling boot. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, somebody is wearing an ankle bracelet under a wrestling boot. That's so <laughs> indie wrestling. I can't believe how indie wrestling this is. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to fill one stereotype in all these years. <laughs> and then you came over and you were just talking to us about your house arrest and you were talking to us about your tractor. And we were like, we have no idea anything about tractors. You're like, you're just, it's like you're speaking another language to us. <laughs> Don't worry. That's usually how it gets when I talk about farming, blacksmithing, and Ooh. most things. You're, you're a blacksmith? I'm, yeah, I've been trying to be for a couple of years now. I've gotten... I'm in the process of upgrading all of my homemade stuff with more homemade stuff, but that's made of better quality stuff. Okay. Well, so, but I've, I've gotten a few projects done over the years. I've just been teaching of, myself pretty much. One of, one of my best friends is uh, like a master. He's like a pro blacksmith. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, his, his name is Sage. Uh, he's actually, he's actually got four Guinness world records. Oh really? Uh, but that's not for blacksmithing. Oh, he yeah. has a uh, the the <laughs> he pick up he would pick up the anchors that he would blacksmith with. Oh yeah, with his and nipple rings. He would pick them up with his nipple rings. What? And he got the Guinness World Records for that. <laughs> that's a hell of a fetish. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not one to judge. No kink shaming here. <laughs> this is a safe it's space. Just, it just imagine just it just makes me wonder what his girl does to him in the bedroom. <laughs> I've never wondered that, nor will I. Actually, I think, you know, if you hang around with him long enough, he's just going to straight up tell you. <laughs> Probably. But Grey, Grey Wolf is taking it up now. Say what? Grey Wolf is taking it up now. Oh, what, blacksmithing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I have a, a project I got to get done for him. Mm-hmm. I was uh, back a couple years ago when he was like, seemed really down. I was going to forge him a a really high layer Damascus battle axe mm-hmm. and now I've got the metal to do it. I just got to do it. Well, I see him every day. He's Oi, How's he doing? Yeah, I, have, I haven't heard from him in a while. He's dude, he's he's enthusiastic. Like more than I've seen him in a long time. Good. Cuz uh, cuz uh, us me and a lot of his of, of other old friends have been really worried about him. Right. He he lives here. Uh Cool. He so lives with you guys? He, he lives he lives in my house. Yeah, well, like he moved in he moved in in December. He's been here. He's been here for a little while, and uh, I'm, you know, awesome. Checking in with him as often as I possibly can, just like good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that because we all got 
just let him know that Mandy and, and everybody else down there has been worried about him for the longest time. Well, he might listen to the episode. But, so Good. if you have something so to say to him. If you're listening, we, we miss you, brother. I really, miss, I really miss him, especially with the Grey Wolf meal. Oh, that was a night to remember. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. We just got done unloading the ring at Dave's house, and we were all starving, didn't know what to do. Somebody said Waffle House, and then 10 minutes later we're there, and he ordered like half the menu. Yeah. <laughs> As he's one to do. Yep. Well, when you live the life of a barbarian, you have to do it. Yeah, it, it, it's it's incredible to to like see the amount of eggs he eats and how the amount of like eggs he just he'll in one meal take nine eggs. Wow! And, and put them in not a meal, just one sitting. He'll put them all in one big cup. Like most of them are the the whites. Yeah. And he only puts like one or two yolks in there. Mm-hmm. And he'll just put some milk in there, and he'll just drink the whole thing. It'll be a big like Slurpee cup. Wow! Wait now. Now I feel like a lightweight because I only eat six eggs in the morning. <laughs> he, he he does he does that like morning and night. Wow! <laughs> that's, like, that's like his go to. I am such a weakling now. <laughs> so you said you're trying to power lift now? I've uh, before this uh, shutdown and everything. I was just getting done my winter mass training, strength training, mm-hmm. and. I surprised myself actually because I I would because the year before I was all in rehab from getting back surgery, mm-hmm. and so I figured I'd try to start pushing some heavier stuff and try to get big again. And I, like, the, in the first week of training, I decided to see how I would do on deadlift, and I put four hundred on there, and got it. Cool. I pushed. I haven't done four hundred on deadlift since high school. Yeah, it's that's great, man. That's so. so great. I was thoroughly shocked, and I was up to about 450 when I got done. So now I'm probably back down to nothing. <laughs> before before everything closed and the gyms closed, Grey Wolf took me to his gym. Oh yeah, and, and had me doing like heavier weight than I'd done in a while. Uh, but that was just that was just you know every once in a while at night when everything else was closed because awesome. that's the best that's the best time to go to the gym. Oh yeah. Like, he had he had the uh, urge fitness, which is like you just go to, you just use the key at night and you just go in and work out. Yep. So I'd go in there. I went in there with him and um, had me doing a bunch of stuff I had never done before. And uh, uh, I personally feel like all gyms should be twenty four seven. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the the one that I live down the street from opens at five a.m. and closes at like eleven. And I'm like, I've been telling them for years, like we need to be twenty four seven. And they're their first. Mm-hmm thing is well the owner doesn't think you'll make money i'm like then if you wouldn't make money out of planet fitness and retro and all these other ones wouldn't do it either oh you're making the same money whatever time it is oh yeah it's just it's, just giving, the membership is where you make your money not the hours well, that you're open well let me let me um let me cite a little information here about the guy he's worth two mil doesn't live in the same state and pinches pennies with this place mm. so well, you know, um, this is, this is the first gym I've ever been to where the owner doesn't basically live at the gym. There you go, Lizzie. Go ahead. There's nothing down there you can hurt. Oh, to be one and a half again. So I wanted, I wanted to uh, make sure that you had the idea, and anybody, you know, anybody who has similar, you know, has they're on our mutual fans that listen. Okay. Or whatever, kind of just understand that, like, I I feel bad, like I ditched you guys, and no, 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 no. It, it was, know. uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Rick. Uh, he explained that you guys had other things, and it just didn't line up right. So I'm, I, I understood it. It just gave me more fuel to really poke the needle at you guys. <laughs> Just, to, just when you said you guys, you mean me, guys? Yeah, you and the other two that weren't supposed to be that were supposed to be there that weren't there. You're talking about Bomb Boy? No, no, no. Um, he said that you had a comedy gig, or no, either you had an acting gig or a comedy oh. gig, and then the other somebody else had something. And uh, the other person. The other, he said there were two supposed to be two other guys there. That no, they, I wasn't talking specifically about that time. I was oh, talking okay. about the fact that like, um. I left the company and then don't really talk to you guys. And I don't you, mean come down, down. you mean down Delaware? Yeah, yeah. 
that's it's, that's understandable. I mean, bookings come and go. Right. So, I right. mean, it's just it's just a, one of those I'll see you when I see you kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you know, I I had the I had the idea. I had the 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 total feeling that like I I wanted to leave the business on my terms. Okay. Oh, so are, you're done. So that's what Fired? my plan that was what my plan was. Oh, okay. So I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to finish out the summer. That's like my my rest of my booking." So that's some 2 years ago. That was my summer. Okay. I was going to finish out the summer and then I was just going to walk away. Or at least walk away for a while. Yeah. You know, at least give my body a break for a while because that's your all want to do. Yeah, cuz you know, I can only take so many bumps and it's it's only ramping up where it's got to be there's got to be chairs involved there's got to be weapons involved and i'm just like all right i'm gonna just take a little bit of a break yeah uh, and you know see where i am i i don't want to say it's retirement because you can't retire from something they get paid 50 bucks at the most to do yeah so um but yeah the, the everybody no matter how young or how invulnerable you think you are eventually you do start a bump card yeah i mean now, I, I, I would bump forever in a day when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And I've got no problem bumping now. It's just I've since learned that because of my size, I don't have to. Right. So, and then that's also helped also changing a gimmick down there to something that wasn't supposed to bump. Right. Helped teach me that, oh, well, I can still do tell the story I want to tell without being the whole well, flip bump this and flip bump that. Have some little guy pick me up for a body slam. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. <laughs> to where now it's was that it, it, uh, it, Corona cough? Huh? Was that a Corona cough? Uh, <laughs> we, we, no, we, no, 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 no. Don't worry, don't worry. I, I have allergies. You don't have to sacrifice me as tribute. No. <laughs> you, also, you also got them babies. You got to look out. Yeah, for. I got two little ones. I got my three-year-old son and my one and a half-year-old daughter. Oh, you guys are you guys are cranking them out, huh? Oh, that's it, just two, just the two. So this quarantine isn't going to cause a third one to come. <laughs> <in>. No, <laughs> uh, if, if anything, it's going to cause more projects to get done that mm. should be done. Well, you're you're a hustler, dude. You're always moving. You're always working. You're always doing something. So it's it's funny, like when I catch up with you, and and it's hard for us to catch up with each other. Oh, yeah. It's really it's really hard because even without a quarantine, because right. we live far away. We, on top of living far away, we've always got things going on. Yeah. We both of us always have some hu- hustle. And I, I think I, I went back <laughs> with you. I went back with you and you said, you said something about uh, me. You thought we were cool or what? Oh. I was like, I was like, dude, you don't understand how rich and famous I am now. <laughs> <laughs> famous, maybe rich. <sighs> neither, neither of those things. Neither of those things. <clears throat> we are famous and rich in our own minds. Well, dude, if if I'm over with 30 people who fill a fire hall, <laughs> maybe if that's famous. The only famous I care about as soon as my music hits more than one person screams. That's all I care about. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole reason behind that is when I was younger, a younger man, I was unmotivated and lazy and I hit that point probably in my mid twenties. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty much when I started wrestling yeah. that I discovered that if you really want to leave a mark, you can't sit on the sideline. You got to get up and you got to do stuff. So I wish I was as motivated as I am now, right. like twenty years ago. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Like I'll when I when I talk to people, when I talk to younger guys in the in wrestling and trying to like give them my vet vet advice, which I, I don't, I had to put the quotations on it. Cause yeah. I'm just a guy who's been doing it a long time. I'm not the best. <laughs> and I've never made, a, I've never made a living off of it, but well, we are just old guys in a business for younger people. Right. So I, I always say, I wish somebody at 20 would have been like, do you know how important, how important your, your body is, how important your, your physique is, how important this stuff goes away. This stuff yeah. doesn't, like whatever you have naturally now, start working on it and yeah. maintain what you have now. And don't think like, well, like, you know, I'll, 
whatever. I I have this body naturally. Like yeah. Like I didn't like learn to discipline myself on weights and stuff until until I was already close to losing my natural testosterone. <laughs> well, it's if I didn't get into wrestling, I probably would have been on one of the episodes of Six Hundred Pound Life at this point. Okay. Because it was wrestling, the, the 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 actual business of wrestling, that opened my eyes to the fact that I was massively unhealthy. Even though I was still athletic, I was still massively unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And I know I've talked about it a lot, more than a lot, if you ask Sue, to to other people that that I went from this unhealthy weight down to a more healthy weight. Right. And. And I've been great ever since. Yeah, dude, I was happy. I was happy to see you make that transformation. Like, really, like there was a whole new glow to you when you were, when were first. When you like, did you go away for a while? It was we had it was DCW had a very long stretch between shows that one year. I think okay. it was like it was 2010. I think when I had this train when I finally changed because it was the year after I got out from my back. Uh, um trouble with the law uh -huh. and i was i was 360 of bleh. <laughs> <laughs> you were there you remember <laughs> yeah i i, I, you I remember. remember i remember you remember and and then i did the christmas show against vader and i heard some things in the locker room about me that kind of touched the nerve and then i did the thing with vader and you couldn't see him around me mm. and i'm like okay now I, I now's the time to to lose it and then i took that full spring like six months mm. and killed myself to get down to nothing and i even didn't even have any muscle because because mm -hmm. I, I look i keep looking back at the old pictures after i won my first belt and i'm like god my neck is so tiny mm -hmm. yeah like it's funny though like in the mi while you're in it it's never as big as like when you look back at it yeah. Like that's what we get the benefit of the fact that we get to watch videos and we get to look at pictures and stuff that they, they probably didn't have back in the day. Or even like your typical everyday public figure doesn't really have or your most people aren't public figures. So yeah. they don't get the luxury of looking back and going, oh, look how or some people look at like their uh, graduation pictures and they're like, oh, man, I was so skinny then I was so yeah. skinny then. But at the time, I thought I was a big fat ass. Yeah. So it's it's like um, it's like. You got to zoom out of yourself while you're in yourself oh, yeah. to appreciate what you've got while you've yeah. got it. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that to move forward, sometimes you have to look back to realize where you've come from. Right, right. You to see where to see, and then from that, and that's when you decide. Okay, that's what I've done. I'm here now. Which way am I going to go? Right. So, yeah. you know, just uh, got to pick which, 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 uh, which fork in the road, which side yeah. you're going to go. It's like, hmm, do I go with the haagen and potato chips and the awesome binge-watching, or do I go downstairs in the basement and beat my ass by myself for maybe a six-pack? Well, a six-pack is such a lofty goal. I mean, true. It's very no, true. One get, I mean no one gets them. And then once you do, if you do, you, you, you're miserable. Like, <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not healthy if you have a six-pack. Like, I mostly, you're... you're you're just like yeah you're eating, you're you're a eating. robot at that point to, yeah you're just kind of a robot and because uh, uh, yeah, yeah i watch a lot of the um bonus stuff from the marvel movies and mm -hmm. then guys talk about the hell they have to go through to get that body and how and they usually talk to the wife or husband of the, right. of the actor and they're like they were so fucking miserable right I, i've been i was actually just talking about this with my girlfriend because um I was like, she was like, oh, I don't normally date meathead guys. So I like, I didn't, I didn't even like give you the attention because like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a one year old crawling around the office. So I've got to, I got to keep an extra set of ears around. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, so I was talking about like, I was like, at least I'm not like the type of meathead who like has to, has to like count everything and has to like, okay. has to measure everything out and like, there's, oh, like, the there, there's, there's guys that live by that scale they have mounted to their right. counter. And then it's like, I, I'm i glad I'm not that. And she's like, yeah, that's not attractive to anyone. Like, yeah. And 
what's funny is that now I'm also realizing that I value compliments from straight guys more than I value compliments from women. <laughs> like, like I get them from I'll get them from women I'll get them from women and gay guys all the time. I, I could but, see I could see you walking down Rehoboth and 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 constantly getting wolf whistled. Yeah, but 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 that, knowing that, you that but knowing that, you knowing you you turn around put a big grin on your face and flex. Well, <laughs> I would I look look I. <laughs> the 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 compliments and the cat calls from gay dudes and straight women, that's a dime a dozen. But if a, a a a straight man who goes, wow, dude, I'm jealous of your body. I wish I had your hair. I wish, yeah, like I wish I looked like you. And it's like, oh, that's <laughs> that's so sincere. Like that, you, you you turn gay for five seconds. No, I mean it's not a gay thing. It's just a it's just a sweetness thing. It's like yeah, a real yeah, know, it's a real sweetheart thing. It's like, oh, I mean, like <laughs> I had this. I when when if I was if I was to ever get back to that and get those moments, I would turn to Sue and go, "You've got some. You got to be careful because you got competition." <laughs> right. But, it's really never. It's it's so funny because I, um, I've been I was doing this this bit on stage where I was talking about like, hey, you know you know how like some certain like skinny people or like really overweight people say like don't body shame me, don't body shame me, but then like they'll see somebody who works out and they'll be like oh, oh, oh look I work out and then they like puff their chest up and act like they're mocking like bodybuilders and I'm like. You think I do this because I like me? You're body <laughs> shaming me. Stop. <laughs> I do this because deep down inside I hate myself. Right. Like I'm do I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me cuz people I don't realize by rep 50 I'm crying inside. Right. Like the body dysmorphia that we face as <laughs> yeah as yes, uh, as weightlifters and well, but, but in the flip side, the people that that come in there and don't have a clue, and then flaunt themselves. I'm not going to name names, but I've seen people in the last couple of years where they were like posting crap all over Facebook, flexing in front of the mirror, and having nothing to show for it. Like they they, they say, "Oh, I worked hard. Got to watch this gun show," and their arms are like like a PVC that. pipe. They're like that, right. and I'm like. What guns are you talking about? Are you talking about your AR back at home because you have a, a little dick syndrome? Right. <laughs> don't body shame. Don't body shame now. But, uh, yeah, it's really like, hey, um, don't don't body shame these these uh, these weightlifter people because we're sensitive. <laughs> we're sensitive too. Well, a lot of these people don't realize is we have the strength to pick you up in your car. Don't piss us off. It's the same way. It's the same reason why you don't piss off a sniper because you'll never see it coming. Right. You'll uh, never hear it either. Well, <laughs> hopefully you won't feel it either. <laughs> like, what's that noise? <laughs> oh, so you won't hear it, but yeah. if you say what's that noise, you've heard it. Oh, yeah. You just be like, la la la. <laughs> uh. And this is why I try to become friends with every special forces guy I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of what do you think of that the comp the like compensating comparison? Like, um, my my cousin recently started driving like a Raptor, like a big truck. Oh God! And my brother, my brother is just a he's a silly goose, and he's, <laughs> and I love him so much. He. He was joking, and he just makes this joke, and he went, "Hey, sorry about your penis." I heard <laughs> oh, and, and oh, when, oh, that's great. But I, it, it's funny because, like, my mom automatically stuck up for his penis, and she was like, <laughs> "He's a Burke. Of course, he doesn't have a little penis. Whatever it was." And I was like, no, it wasn't about that. It wasn't, don't, don't be too literal about it. He was, <laughs> there happens to be some sort of insecurity <laughs> and uh, that, that maybe he's joking about. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to you being big country and driving a big pickup truck that says big country on the back. Well, to be uh, honest, as big as, as I am, I drive a relatively small truck mm -hmm. and I see these guys. Now I've got no problem if you want to have a big truck or a little truck. The thing is, 
if you're going to put the money out for the lifted thing and the um, secured undercarriage and all this extra stuff, and you live in the cul-de-sac and you've never been off-road, that's just a waste of time and money when you could have done something better and not have to like compensate for little teeny tiny pebbles between your legs. You, you know what? I don't. I think I don't think it has to do with. I don't think it has to do. And let me say, I, I, my, I, I, let I me just clear a, up for my cousin real quick. Okay. Uh, my cousin, my cousin got that got that truck as a gift from somebody. It wasn't. <laughs> it was. It was not him. He's in the room, isn't he? No, he's, he's in the room right now. And you have no, to. He's never. He's that never that been here. Before. He's never back. been in this house before. <laughs> but, oh, you just see it now. He's listening to this, and he's like, "Oh, where's that fucking baseball bat?" <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach that Corey Castle a lesson. But, uh, <laughs> um, but now me and my girlfriend, anytime we hear like a a, a loud car go by, we always go, okay. "Hey, sorry about your penis." <laughs> it's just, it's just a little to, joke. I, I, I do that to the guys that don't street race but have the, the uh, um, the big bumblebee mufflers. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's weird because it's like, and why and do you want to pay this, more this, for this, gas now, now, now this now this is going to be body shaming whenever i see those kind of trucks i bend over to look at the undercarriage to see if the paint's been scraped off and it's 90 percent of the time it's not so i'm like oh yeah yeah you're a weirdo i it's like um you you were talking about because of off-roading and yeah uh, it, yeah, paint would have scraped off from wear and tear now, now there is a truck that that um back in my hometown there's a truck that goes around that's lifted but he's got all the stickers on the back because he's promoting his shop because that's what his shop does. So that I don't have a problem with. And yeah, guys, as long as you're, like, you're getting your getting your shit in, you're getting yeah, your stuff over. Exactly, right. which is fine. I got no problem with that. The same way I got no problem with guys that legitly have the 400 acre farm and they need the F350 to be able to get from here to way out there. Right. My, my thought process is: Why would you want to spend more on gas? Look, this is the same reason why I keep asking people back in the day, why would you buy a Hummer? You've never been in the military. Right. My 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 brother, my brother wants to get a new car and wants to see if and he's like trying to see if I'll take his car. Yeah. And I'm like, um, no, I don't want to spend more on gas. Like he drives a um uh, like a Acura SUV that he has to put premium gas in. And I drive like a, I drive a, a a little Lancer that does good on gas. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna pass on a piece of a mechanic mechanical mechanics advice to your your brother. He can run regular gas. Just put the the uh, stabilizers and uh, cleaner stuff in there and mm -hmm. octane booster, and you save yourself on money. Okay, that that's something I'll pass on. I mean, uh, he's. He's probably not going to listen to the episode. He doesn't well, the listen. Thing to is if, if if you're really worried about having dirty engine parts, you just run Seafoam. It's a, there's a product they call it's called Seafoam, and you run it through your motor and it cleans everything up. Mm -hmm. It's well, really that's what I use, especially in old motors, because I'm I'm the kind of guy that would go part the chop pile to go find some old classic car to rebuild. Okay. Well, <laughs> not much for new cars. I'm not much for cars in general. It's not really my, not my thing. What's the matter, Lizzie? Where you at? Okay. I'm fine. My She's just fussing. <laughs> That's right. So, how old is your son? Three and a half now? He's three. He'll be he's his birthday's October the thirteenth. His first birthday was on a Friday. Oh, I I turned to his mother and I'm like, Oh god, is this a sign of things to come? So it's a he had a quarantine birthday? No, no. They had their birthdays last Last this October. Okay. Okay. So they're. I'm hoping we'll be out of quarantine by then. But yeah. Well, ideally. The way things are going. You know, it's funny because that that brings me to, to another thought, and uh, that that'll spiral into a whole bunch of things. But probably. Uh, this is a this is a real time capsule. This yeah. is a real time capsule. So us having this conversation on the record during this. Historic thing. This is a very historic thing. Uh, I want this to be a record for yeah. not only the fact oh, that yeah. that, <clears throat> and we, I'm of the mindset. I'm of the mindset of people keep going. Oh, I want to go back to normalcy. I'm like, well, normal sucked before and wasn't really doing anything and was just killing everything. How about we move forward? Yeah. There's 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 a new normal now. Yeah. There's I'm going to be a new normal now. 
when the Himalayas are 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 visible for the first time in half a, in half a century, that's a sign. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So on <laughs> on the record, I like to have these conversations with people who I think are very special and uh, mean something to me. And to me, you've always been kind of like a familial. We've always had like a real cool, close bond yeah. feeling. So right. I wanted to tell you on the record that, that dude, I love you, man. I, I, I really do. And I think that like anytime we've ever been around each other, it's always been that like we're brothers. I feel yeah. like we, you've always been like, let's talk. I'm going to talk to you like I'm your big brother now. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're like, you're ready for some advice? And I'm like, I didn't ask for advice, but I guess I got to take it. <laughs> Well, that well, that well, that's 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 the country in me. Right. It's, we're all about dishing out advice, even when it's not welcome, and right. we don't we don't mean to be offensive. We're no, not trying to push no, ourselves. No, no, absolutely. It's just, I don't take it as I don't take it as a like a um, like a narcissistic, uh, unsolicited advice. Of course, <laughs> hey, you want to know what you should do? <laughs> but <laughs> but it's you're like, just it's like, well, it, it's like in the gym when I see somebody doing something wrong, I'm like, look, I've done that, like you're doing it, and I've been hurting for 20 years because of it, and maybe you shouldn't do it. So, you have a you have a, a level of kindness where it's very much like, it's very much like, hey, I I'm only trying to help you, and and it's it's sometimes as simple as like you going like, well, look how look at look at what I've got that's great. You can have that too, <laughs> even though what I've got that's great is like. A little bit compared to most people, right? I mean, but what? What? It's relative, you know what I mean? It's very relative. And, and I don't mean to sound like I don't mean to because I know what, after no, normally after I walk away from a conversation like that, and I'm like, well, maybe I, like crap. Well, now I just now I sound like a complete douchebag because I made it all about myself when I wasn't trying to, when I was just trying to make a point and try to help somebody and give a little advice. Mm-hmm. So I, I will end up walking away from the conversation and replay them all in my head and try not to sound like a giant douche. Well, I'm thinking about you being like, like introducing me to your wife and you, when you first met her and you were like, Hey, uh, when you, when you get a good girl, keep her that kind of stuff. Like you're saying stuff where it's like, it, it applies, it applies to what your relative situation is, which I, which I see it a hundred percent. But, uh, I wanted to then ask if you can, if I don't remember if you told me this story before, but how did you guys meet? Because they know, well, like, you're we've like, on one of those made for each other. It's like a real clicky thing. Uh, we've we Click. met through we met through one of them dating apps, uh, one of them dating website things. Okay. Was the, um, was the farmers only thing? Oh yeah. So, because I tried them other things for a couple of years and kept getting weirdos and duds and just straight people that were wrong for me. Figured, right. oh, might as well stick with my own kind. <laughs> so. Uh, found her, found out that she raised horses, and I'm like, okay, well, I've always wanted to be around horses, so, mm-hmm. and and I've just been a plowboy my whole life, so. Do you do you uh, have horses on the on the farm now? Yes, she originally when I first started dating her, she originally had like 15, right, and now we're down to three. Okay, and that's just because when we got married, we moved to a smaller place, so she couldn't have as many horses. But there was three. I told her when when she started when she started cutting down her herd. I said, "Okay, that's fine. You do what you have to do." But there's three horses I'm not going to let you sell. And she's like, "Why?" I said, "Because you love them horses so much. If I force you to sell them, you're going to hate me forever." <laughs> and she's had. We sadly lost one, mm-hmm. since, but he was an old fella when I first met him. Right. So, but it's I I knew for a fact. You know, look, I knew back then if I had act like some of the assholes that I, I've tried not to be and make her get rid of these horses, she was going to hate me forever. That and I didn't want to get rid of the horses. Yes, little girl. Yes, yes, yes. She's having a blast. <laughs> yes, she is. Because she's the center of attention again. But, yeah. And now, we're like every married couple. We have our squabbles and ups and downs. But deep down... I, at this point in time, if anything happened and I lost her, you'd probably f- hear about me on the six, six o'clock news doing something stupid because I'm probably pissed off. Do, 
do I get the same six o'clock news here that you get in Delaware? <laughs> I don't, well, I'm in Maryland I don't, now, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch the news. <laughs> I don't watch the news. I, I watch the news. Uh, I watch the nightly news to get the headlines of the day, find out what the weather's going to do, and to make sure that we're not all impending with death. So that's all I care about. I don't. Uh, it's like and it's. I've had not so much arguments with people, but it's like, and I try to like have those conversations with people, and they're like, "Oh, well, just you're listening to the fake news." I'm like, "No, I listen to six o'clock news. I get the headlines, I get the weather, I get the sports, and that's it." Right. I don't do the whole CNN and and MSNBC and all that crap because most of that's just a bunch of bullshit and just filler and. It's it's content, ad space, and clickbait. Precisely. Uh, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I I started this thing the other day. Uh, my I was uh, I was helping helping a brother's friend move a couch, and I was like, and I was like, lift with your back, not your legs. That's all fake news. Let's just <laughs> lift with your back. <laughs> That's usually how the best stories start. Yeah, I was helping my brother move a couch. <laughs> and then next thing you know, we killed three hobos when they dropped it. <laughs> We're having the battle of the water jugs, apparently. Yes, that's jug life. <laughs> you know it's a good day when you've had about when you've had to refill that thing twice. Yeah, I mean, I always I always keep a filled one in the fridge. <laughs> well, that 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 imparts planning, and I. <laughs> If I get up and put my underwear on right in the morning, then I'm having a good day. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> um, that implies that you didn't have it on when you woke up. <laughs> that's, that's not my speed. <laughs> well, I'm married, so yeah, I don't have to anymore. Well, you got some, you got some kids in there. Well, there, there's, there's. This morning was like the twilight zone because it was like getting on to nine o'clock and they're both still asleep oh cool we had to wake her up at like eight thirty, nine o'clock and he slept till damn near well we had to wake him up at ten thirty. well they're they're not i mean your son's not at <clears throat> school age yet so. no no but um most normal days he'll be like up before me playing mm -hmm. in the room okay and i usually have to creep out to go to the bathroom and then be able to go downstairs to do my my cardio how do you feel about like screen time with them? Are you gonna like uh, um, when it comes to the screens and stuff? Are you gonna like uh, limit that for them? Are you gonna make sure it doesn't happen at all when well, it comes? Sue has the mindset that because everything is technologically these days, giving them no screen time at all is going to be a hindrance. Oh yeah, and so he gets limited screen time with his tablet, mm -hmm. and it's usually just like for wind down time for like getting ready for naps, getting ready for bed. Mm -hmm. Or he's um, been like super hyper kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, little girl, she's just sticks yes. her nose in wherever. But um, <laughs> when we had my son's first doctor's appointment, his like three month visit. Oh, no, I'm sorry, his first year visit. The nurse asked us how much screen time he gets, and we said none. And she, I, I thought she had a stroke. Yeah. She's like, really? I'm like she probably don't hear that ever. I'm like, yeah, he's one. He shouldn't have a phone. Because mm -hmm. there's been people that I know of, once again, not going to name names, that are relatives, that have let the phones and tablets raise their kids. And and I sit back and I look at that. And, and the, the train wreck that, sadly, the kid's, the, the kid's going to grow up as. Right. And I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, it's just, it. it I want to step in as a parent. I want to step in as an uncle. I want to step in as this and that. But I, I know I can't, usually because Sue flicks me in the back of the head, tells me to sit back down. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I had a rough childhood. Now, I had a good childhood mm -hmm. on the farm, and my parents were great. They did the best thing they could for me. But out in school and public, I had a rough time. Mm -hmm. And I know it's because of the weird shit that, that I was as a kid. So I'm like, I don't. I want to try to help my the, these these kids avoid that because I'm like I dealt with crap and I really don't want them to deal with crap. It's like the same thing with my kids. I want them because they're they're always smiling and giggling and laughing, and having a good time, and I'm like I want them to do that forever. Right. Right. 
Because yeah. because I know I I know I was like that like I was like them at that age, and then I went to school, and I'm like, oh wow, people are assholes. Yeah, yeah. Um, other people can really f- suck the fun out of things. Oh yeah, we call them fun suckers. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, when you get into school and you get bullied or you get, and it, it's it's you know, raising kids now, like especially two that are close in age like that. Um, yeah. You know, me and my siblings were close in age as well, and it's like, um, you in the school you see like how the how your siblings are treated, like what they're bullied from, or like how you're bullied or whatever. Like when you come home, and you gotta like, you gotta like. Go, hey, what, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to take this out on each other? How are we going to take out our bullying on each other? Like, because like uh, Sue and I were having a discussion this morning and I, and I, and I used the point of reference that me and my brother, my older brother are a year apart. And when mm -hmm. we were standing there waiting for the school bus, we were like best of friends. But once he got on there with his buddies, I didn't exist. And I had to deal with my own shit by myself without any backup. Right. So. Yeah. Like, I'm just. I, I, I don't want my kids to have that. I want my when if my son sees his sister having trouble, I want him to know that you step up and you help your sister. Right. Like, and I want I want his sister to know that if he gets into a squabble, you stand up next to him and you help back him up. Right. Well, you know, there's all this effort to abolish bullying completely, but I think that's never going to happen. No, it's that that's like. Saying you don't want the tide to roll in, you don't want the um, the beaches to erode anymore. It's it's going to happen. It's a natural. It's it's part of nature. It's going to happen. Right. But all you can do is try to do your best to just help, not alleviate it, but just make it easier to deal with. Like my mom told me something when I was a kid, and it like changed my whole outlook on getting bullied. Yeah. Was she was like. Consider consider the source on all of it, and I I guess that applies to anything and everything now. Like consider who said it and oh yeah, you know, what you never know what you know they're probably going through something worse. Uh, oh yeah, their their life probably sucks. Oh like, yeah, a lot know. of times a lot of times the worst bullies are the ones that get it really really bad at home. Mm-hmm. And, it's just their way of, of of going about dealing with things because they see that every day at home. So it's it's not so it's not so much we have to fix the kids, we have to fix the parents. Right. But then it's also like now nowadays kids get bullied and then it follows them home on the yeah. phone. Oh yeah. That, that's, that's that that part needs to stop. Like, yeah, that that's why I missed the eighties because we didn't have that crap. We had we had walkie talkies and we had Barney and it was just Sesame Street. That was it. And co- in the comic book store and going outside. We didn't have all this crap. I don't think I had Barney as a kid. Uh, that might have been a 90s thing. Yeah, that that was like more of my little sister. Like yeah. my sister just turned she just turned 25 during the quarantine. Wow. Uh, my little sister just turned 25. My baby sister. I remember the day she was born. Yeah. She changed her diaper. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I remember the day my little brother was born. Yes, me and my me and my older brother were uh, getting babysat by our grandma. She used to live right up the hill from us. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. A lot of people they don't have the the family ties like they used to. Now, I'm I'm all for the you grow up, you move away. But when I grew up, my dad bought part of the farm from my grandfather, and we lived next door to my grandparents. Mm-hmm. So that uh, that that's the thing I, I feel like there's a big disconnect between the generations because you got all these people that grow up, move away, and that usually don't interact with their, their their grandparents anymore. And then the kids don't know their grandparents, or it's very limited access, or just no access at all. Mm-hmm. So then there's just this, this, this whole generation that has no clue of th- what things were like before the easy street they got it as now yeah i mean I, <laughs> that's usually my argument with people when they start trying to badmouth the unions and stuff I'm like you do realize that people died to give us the things we have now no different than people in the military way back in the day died to give us the freedoms we got now 
and a lot of people, it's just, it just, it blows them away because they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, there was a famous incident where they hung people out in front of the factory. Mm. It's like uh, pirates. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. But it was, they had union breakers. And if they, they found you were trying to unionize, they either beat you up or killed you or kill somebody in your family. Wow. Because my, my great grandfather helped start the local that I'm a part of. And there's a story in the family of he went into hiding because of all this and he left my great grandmother with a nine millimeter pistol and said if anybody shows up you shoot first ask questions later well then two weeks goes by and it's like nine ten o'clock at night and somebody's messing with the back door mm-hmm. so my grandmother drilled the door reloaded and drilled it again with the nine mil mm-hmm. and nobody showed up again but a lot of people seem to forget or because it's not it's glossed over in history class that people legitimately died or murdered because of trying to make a better life for their, for the future. And right. now people are like, Oh, well, it's unnecessary anymore. I'm like, no, no, we need it more than ever now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, um, it's like when you, when you look at the way, like some expired ways, there are some expired ways. Yeah. Yes. There, yeah, there, there's there's some ways that it just are like right um but as as a father you know that you want your kid to have better than what you had oh yeah and and every generation should want what's best for the next one but but there are things that were passed down to me from my grandfather and my father that i want to pass down to my children right things like the doing things in farming the mechanicing skills the yeah. the 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 essence of drive to, to you're nothing's going to happen that you want by sitting there and wishing for it. You've got to get up and, and get your hands dirty. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want. That's back, back around to our first topic. That's what I wish I had really had installed in my head. Right. Like, like now we're doing like with jokes, we're going back to the first, we're referring to the first joke now for the punchline. Callbacks. <laughs> oh. Nope. There's a, like my, 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 one of my favorite bands, I have a tattoo for the band Alien Ant Farm. Oh, yeah. Big dork for Alien Ant Farm. But they had a song <laughs> in their last album, which was not good. I didn't like it very much. But they had one song where they said, nobody scores from the sidelines. Yeah. And uh, that, that's, oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So take the chance. Say, with, say the thing that's going to open opportunities. It's going to open doors. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe make the move. Make make the move and do the work that's gonna get. Yeah, the work's gonna suck, but make the yeah. but do it so that way, it's for the result later. That that's awesome. So now I'm gonna probably lose points with you because I'm gonna refer to a band that a lot of people hate. They they can't stand the band, but Nickelback. They had that song, "If Today Was Your Last Day," uh-huh. which I really, really use as that that whole mindset of if if I die today. Will I be remembered or will I just be another name on a headstone? Right. So that's why I do all the things I do because I'm trying to leave something behind. Like, because I'm, I'm trying to be a writer and I'm uh, a part of a few of these um, young writer, aspiring writer Facebook pages. Right. And I've seen this question pop up a lot lately of why do you write? And I have the same answer every time. I'm trying to leave something behind. It's a, it's a legacy. Okay. Something, yeah, a legacy that generations from now people will read, and I hope that that they'll I'll, I'll inspire them the way I was inspired by some dead writer that I I used to love. Right. Uh, uh, truthfully, that's probably why I started this podcast. Yeah, because I I honestly wanted like I want to inspire vulnerability. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah. You you can grow that way. You can grow through staying open and. And uh, yeah. evolving. Yes. <laughs> Forgive the pun. Yeah. I like, actually, I like that's the best picture of Feinberg I've ever seen. <laughs> that is Feinberg, right? No. Oh, that's that's you. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I don't he... remember your cheeks being that puffy, though. <laughs> well, Maybe that was maybe that was maybe that was when I was in a bulking stage. 
Maybe, maybe. I like it. I like it a lot. John Kelsner. Do you know John Kelsner? Uh, Kelsner. He, he always sat at the gimmick tables at DCW shows back in the day. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He was yeah. Bre- Breaker's friend. Yes. He he designed this logo for me. Oh, that's cool. And uh, and Feinberg put it on this tapestry for me for a gift. Oh, that's cool. If if you're listening to the audio and you have no idea what we're talking about, check it out on YouTube <laughs> or look. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, says go to YouTube. Just go. To have YouTube. a life. Go to YouTube. <laughs> but but man, I, uh, I, I will I will personally say YouTube is one of the best educational tools I've ever had. Yeah, it's like uh, you, why why waste money on college when you can yeah. just learn all that stuff on YouTube? The same way, the same way I'm not paying for uh, blacksmithing lessons. I just watch it on YouTube for free. Right. <laughs> well, you know, when all this stuff's over, if uh, if if Sue's okay with it, you can take a trip up to up here, and I'll introduce you to Sage, and you and Gray Wolf and Sage can go do some blacksmithing. Well, Sue does like road trips. <laughs> Okay. Well, that might be <laughs> we, fun. We've uh, we've road tripped down to Florida at least twice. We went down there. No, I'm sorry, three times actually. Mm-hmm. We went down there for our honeymoon, but we took the the train down and drove back, mm-hmm. and then we drove down uh, a second time because her her grandma's got a condo down in Cocoa Beach. Mm-hmm. So hey, free room and board. <laughs> cool. So, cool. uh, but we went down there twice by ourselves and once with my parents as just like a family trip. <laughs> so, it's so funny. You're shaking her on your knee like, uh, like Santa Claus and you're wearing a, you're wearing a Christmas shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's. <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't, don't knock me because Sue bought this for me. It's, it's April. <laughs> it's currently April. Hey, I grew when I was growing up. We played Christmas. I I played Christmas music in my room, and I didn't care. It was Fourth of July going on outside. I still played the Christmas music. <laughs> my uh, yes, little girl. <laughs> we had a um, uh, my mom had a record player, and all year I would make her pull out like the Chipmunks Christmas album. Oh and put my it on, god, on that was... record player like. <laughs> It's the most annoying thing a kid could probably ever ask a mom to do, but she would do it because she was a good mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we love. We had a record player when I was a kid in our first home that never really worked, but the radio worked. So we always played the radio. But my, we would always, like, like rainy days or whatever, my brother and I would always end up going through the records and asking my mom, what about this one? What about that one? And... When we were building our the house my parents live in now, we my dad brought home a record player that actually worked, and we played Kenny Roger all the day that we were putting sheetrock up. Just the same route. We just kept flipping the record over and over and over. I I uh, I just inherited my grandmother's record player from my mom, awesome. and uh, I have two vinyl albums, and I'm gonna. I'm going to show you on the video the one of them that I think you'll really appreciate. Uh oh. It was, it was a, it was a gift. It was a gift from one of the guests I had on the show. They brought it to them. They brought it with them to the studio. <laughs> That right there, that's a gold album right there. Pile driver, the wrestling Dude, pile album. driver. <laughs> oh God, I really miss the '80s now. And, and for just the audio listeners, uh, it's the it's the the record that has Hulk Hogan with a a, a dirty wife beater undershirt and a hard hat that's spray painted silver. <laughs> That's probably from the same time period that he did a commercial for Right Guard or something, and he was on the beach painting a painting that was clearly not done by him. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. That's that. Uh, now I'm showing my age. How old are you? I'm. Th- I just turned thirty-seven. Okay. Yeah, you're, I'm, dude. I'm thirty-six. I'm, we're, we're this, yeah. 
one year older than me. <laughs> but not even. You're I mean, I'll be thirty I'll be thirty seven in December. So oh. so uh, well, just I mean I, I just I just hit the uh I just turned over the odometer like last week. So Okay. <laughs> so I'm just a couple months behind you. Yes. <laughs> a couple months younger than you. Uh, it's, it's probably because I remember the weird shit. I'm, I, I'm a plethora of useless information. Oh, so am I. Yeah. But I am a phenomenal at Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's the funniest thing. Like, I was just sitting here. Like, we're in quarantine. So uh, there's tons of stuff to watch. But I feel like I've watched so many things. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I'm passing the baby off. Yeah. Maybe you can say hi. It's just Corey. Thank you. And she goes running. <laughs> not yet. She's just learning how to stand by herself. Oh, I was talking about Sue, not. Oh yeah. No, she's. Uh, but yeah. Um... But we were talking we're... about. Oh, uh, yeah, about how age. we're watching, watching stuff. There's so much stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, there's so much stuff to watch. You can watch anything. So. Uh, We've just been binge watching everything. We just sat through the first three Pirates of the Caribbean movies again. For... <laughs> <laughs> I I now have the fortune of living next door to about a house full of seven little girls mm-hmm. that are nieces, and they are all Marvel fans. And they've they've since learned that we have Disney Plus. Okay. So now they're begging us to have Marvel movie marathons at my house. Okay, that's that's something I still need to do. I mean, I'm not I'm not caught up on Marvel movies. Uh, Oh, dude, no, no! I pigged you for a comic geek. Come on, now, don't don't leave me hanging. I'm uh, hanging by myself. I I I never read comic books as a kid. I've got a mug in here. Come on now. I watch cartoons. I watch lots of cartoons. I watch lots of comedy movies. I my trivia knowledge is crazy. Like about like movies and TV shows, like <laughs> actors and stuff. I can I can go on that all day. Yeah, okay. uh, cartoons. Um, Marvel Marvel had me with cartoons. Like I loved X Men. I loved Spider Man. Those cartoons were awesome. Um, but I didn't read the comic books because um, I didn't really read that much when I was a kid. I didn't have a I didn't have a really good attention span. Oddly so. enough, it was comic books that helped teach me how to read. Okay. So, but anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My, I got taught to read by a nun with a ruler. Really? Yeah. Like, like a, like, like a legit nun or is this a work? No, it was a, a shoot nun. It oh, was a wow. sh- yeah. Yeah. It was a, well, that's cool. She, she, um, she made me go to summer school. So it was just, she was like focused every day on making sure I learned how to read. I didn't know you went to a uh, Catholic school. Well, only in elementary school, only yeah. like, uh, first grade for the first two years, the first two years of first grade. <laughs> so is that why your fingers are all like this now? Yeah, everybody goes to first grade for two years, right? <laughs> that's that's really? the way. No, wait, wait, hold on. I thought it was three. <laughs> so, uh, first grade. It was funny because I went to one school for first grade, and then when I had to repeat repeat first grade, my mom moved us to a different school. So I didn't have to go through seeing all my classmates in the year above me. Um, that was nice of her. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice of her. I mean, it could have it could have lined up with something else, and good. There's a good chance that it probably did, but but you know maybe maybe the she's, she's the, probably thinking to back her head. Like, You're so lucky I got a new job. Yeah, it's like it's like the 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 parish tuitions and stuff probably changed. So, something yeah. else had to do with us moving but uh glad that we did <laughs> public school from day one yeah and it shows doesn't it <laughs> well because uh, i am rr can read well you know i i say some of the things you say but i say them as a silly goose sometimes like i all <laughs> the time say legitly and you say it <laughs> you say it all the time too but i'm saying that, it well the thing is because i know it's not slower. a real word I, one of the books I'm probably going to end up writing is a dictionary for pro wrestling mm-hmm. because we have our own language. We're almost like Tolkien. We in, in pro wrestling, there is, there is a legit 
case in point, language right. of, of terminology that we yes. use. And I, I need to write it down. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that could fill a whole book. Maybe that could just be a glossary in a, in a biography. Oh, uh, spark notes. It'll be a spark notes. Yeah. It could just be <laughs> just a little, little asterisk. <laughs> Asterisks. It'll be three pages. <laughs> right. But, you know, um, it, it gets annoying to people who don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've actually got Sue saying stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she, she says legit and, and Mark and stuff like that now. Right. Like, um, <laughs> I, 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 it's just like sometimes it just applies better than anything else. Yes, yes, it does. That sometimes it applies better than anything else. If I say, "Yo, that joke didn't get over," like what if I, if I'm doing comedy and I'm on stage and I'm like, "Well, you know, if I got a pop for that joke," you know what I mean? Like it, it just applies. It applies yeah. so much more uh, to to the things that I need it for. You know, yeah. <laughs> Rather, rather than saying, I got a giggle out of that, it's more funny to say, oh, I got a pop for that one. Well, like, I had to cut that joke because it didn't get a good enough pop. Yeah. Like, that's... Oh, yeah. It's all... I, and, and, yeah, I, I use it in, in, in everyday normal speak, and I usually get, like, a half an hour in on the job, and a guy will come over and go, what the hell are you saying? <laughs> it's Kizarni, brother. <laughs> Show up on a bad job site. Oh God, it's a slobber knocker out there. <laughs> <laughs> do do you? Uh, oh wait, no. I, I already I already asked you this, but I was asked I was asking like if you listen to any podcasts like uh, like Jr. Like because you just said slobber knocker. I was asking, um, I was going to ask if you listen to Jr.'s podcast, but you don't listen to any podcasts because uh, no, I I do I do normally when it's because it's um it's. Where I, I live in Maryland, but I still work in Delaware. Okay. So it's usually like a two hour trip. So, and it's, I usually leave at like three o'clock in the morning. So it's, I'll either throw like one of the Wrestle Rock episodes on there or I'll skim through and see what sounds interesting. Anything that doesn't put me to sleep. <laughs> okay. So re- lately it's been uh, forensic files on Netflix. I'll just, I'll hook, I'll sync up the Bluetooth in the truck. And I'll start the episode, and it'll play automatically, and I just toss it on the passenger seat so I don't have to worry about looking at it and getting stopped by the cops. Mm-hmm. And I just listen to it the whole way I'm going there, and I'm like, hmm, okay, that's an interesting point. Hmm. Well, listen, if you're listening, Forensic Files, make make them all audio files. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually I, I got hooked on it because I was using my wife's car for a while, and there is a channel on Sirius that plays the episodes. Oh, okay, so that's... I was uh, that. That's what got me on it, and I'm like, huh, I know I got it on Netflix somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's I'll, I'll either play music or I'll play that or podcast. Um, it's usually I just listen to whatever's interesting. I usually use I usually use it for background noise, and I sometimes I'll pay attention, sometimes I don't. So it's the same way I I will play certain things in the shop when I'm working. It's mm-hmm. That or when I'm sitting down to write, and I play, I usually have to have a little ambiance or something in the background that allows my brain to just settle on what I'm doing, because I've got that ADD brain. Yeah, that, same thing. That if I sit down in a quiet room and try to focus, I'll think of a hundred a million one things that don't apply. But if there's music playing for some reason, I will focus and get what I'm doing done. Mm-hmm. Probably comes from sitting on a tractor for eight hours a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh- I, I've 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 actually really recently like I keep losing my phone like a, a lot just in <laughs> not in the house I'm, I mean I'm like like not out of the house I'm not out other places and realize that I lost my phone but I'm saying like I'll be in my room and I'll put my phone down somewhere and I'll be out here doing something and I'm like oh sh- crap uh, I ADD'd my phone I don't know <laughs> where no where I left it or or you think you are and it's just your girl taking it going hmm let's see what was he talking about today. Uh, oh crap here he comes oh here it is baby right here you no. got it again no that's not my life <laughs> that's not my life i mean <laughs> i i mean i bet i bet you <clears throat> a lot of people do live that life and that's sad i mean oh i know i'm just i'm just making a joke right right i, I understand <laughs> i just 
I try to be funny. I usually try. To, I usually have to try to be funny because mm-hmm. I walk. Because usually when I walk in a room, I get this. Re- I get this vibe. Oh my god, he's going to eat us. Because <laughs> that's that's how I. Because I usually walk in. I usually have to duck to get through the door. Mm-hmm. So and that's the vibe I usually get, especially in in um in uh, um job site trailers because they're it's all either uh, a big sea can box or a little tiny trailer or just this little shack and I got a duck and squeeze to get in. Mm. Well, you're you're a large man and you scare people. You scare people off appearance. So you wanted to change your gimmick to a scary man. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes out with a microphone and tells bad dad jokes. Are you doing that lately? <laughs> oh, I've I, I have got I've given my fair share of bad dad jokes. No, I mean, when, when you're doing the Omega gimmick, you're doing bad dad jokes. No, no, no. The uh, the Omega gimmick is all about. Now I'm going to show that I'm I'm a real geek. I was a big. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z whore. I I love my Dragon Ball Z mm-hmm. to the point of like how my brain works. I created a character to fit in that that continuity and. Working with Zach, I helped sculpt that into the Omega Phoenix gimmick. Mm-hmm. So, and it's just supposed to be on this. When I'm a bad guy, I'm this big, bad, overbearing, beat the snot out of everybody. And then when I'm a good guy, I am like that, but more of like the bad guys that turned good in the Dragon Ball. Okay. So I'm like, I still have those tendencies, but I do it with a kind heart. Well, I think uh, I think that's like uh, the the fans can look at it and be like, "Yeah, he's an asshole, but he's our asshole." Like, <laughs> that, that that whole thing, and that's well, I, I think that's an actual. What's that? I do take it as a compliment because I, I worked very long and hard to be an asshole. I think that's a I think that's a, a, a Zach line. I, he's actually said that to me before. <laughs> I come from a very long line of assholes, and I've worked very hard for that title. Right, right. It's, it's, it's not something I just woke up with. I had to work on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. you got to put time and effort in to be this kind of asshole. Yeah, uh, so like you said, the dad jokes and puns, that's that's me all the way. Like, that's all I do all day, every day. And this uh, is why we're brothers. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> my, my, my girlfriend, Carly, is like real annoyed with it. Like, um, she, she always says to me, not everything has to be something. Like I always try to squeeze the bit out of it. I'm like, that's how I fill my joke book by making everything something. That's how I get material to bring on stage. It's it's getting to the point where now I'm probably going to start carrying a sign that just says sarcasm because mm-hmm. Sue is starting to get a little. She's like, well, I can never tell because everything with you is gimmick. <laughs> so now it's she's like, I can never tell when you're being serious or when you're being gimmicky or when you're just being an, a, a, a total asshole. Right. So now I'm going to have to just carry a sign and whip it out. Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> just carry like a little, a little, um, dude, you know, th- this will get me into another thing. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, my mom got me this like little sound maker. I used it on wrestle rock. If you listen <laughs> to the last wrestle rock episode, uh, this little sound maker, she got uh, me. Like, uh, I, I haven't had a chance to watch that with the, the, the WrestleMania one. It was the one pre, uh, post wrestling before that. Okay. Yeah, we just did it on Sunday this week. Okay. But uh, I used the little the little noise maker, and there's a, a a boo, and there's a cheering, and there's like a like a sad trump womp womp like womp, that. Thing. Womp, womp. I've got that on my phone. And then there's a little but, like little one of those. It didn't. Uh, but I'm, I hate those things. But, <laughs> but it it leading me to the point where I want to say. Uh, if I make a joke, I don't want to hear someone go wah wah or boom. Those are my least favorite things. Like, <laughs> I brought one of my friends to one of my comedy shows and I did a joke and it didn't get over. And he out loud went boom. And I was like, never do that to me. Ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever do that to me. Don't ever boom me ever. <laughs> like, it's a big, it's a big irk for me. Don't do that. That's like, it's like, that's like, that would be like you saying a really bad word to me. That would be like you calling me a slut or something if I was a woman. It's the same sort of thing. Like, 
Oh, come on now. Hold on, hold on. We both know you're a total slut. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, revolving door. No. No, revolving door. Your nickname is Doorknob. <laughs> All right, I guess I better clean it up now before you just like, that fucking asshole, fuck yeah. Well, um, considering I said the thing earlier about the time capsule, right? Yeah. The time capsule, I want to go back to that just for a moment to say... When we were talking about the legacy thing, yeah. it's right now during the the COVID nineteen quarantine um, coronavirus. Yeah, and we're living through it right now. Yeah, and this is on the record. Okay, you're thirty seven years old. You got two babies. Let's say in thirty years. They want to see what dad's like, so they research and find this episode of this podcast. <laughs> this, is a, this is a segment that I call audio time travel. Okay. So this, at this moment, let's pretend that this audio is being heard 30 years from now by your children. What is the absolute message for, I'm this person now giving a message to you in hopes that you receive it? Oh Jesus! Now we're getting deep. Um, see, this is one of the things that I, I, I tend to have like real emotional things about because I, I I legitly have nightmares about losing my kids or my kids losing me. So um, there's actually a, a short film made and it's set during a zombie apocalypse where a dad has to try to take his infant daughter and try to get her to someplace safe and he turns into a zombie halfway and i've seen it about a hundred times and every time i can never make it through it without crying like 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 a three-year-old kid who just lost his ice cream cone because it, it hurts it's just like I, I it's not so much the fact that 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 she lost both her parents it's just that she lost both her parents in a time when she needs them and it just really hurts and the, the i first saw it when i was working last fall and i was on a crappy job down on the beach pushing sand and i'd been away for about a month and a half and i was missing my kids and missing sue and this popped up and it just as soon as i got i, I didn't even finish watching the video all the way and i, I turned off and i called sue and i'm like i i just want to come home i miss you guys mm. but the message to pass on to my kids i am the way i am now because I've surrounded myself as best I can with people that have pushed me to be good. I, I grew up with three mentors in my life. I grew up with my dad, my grandfather, and my Uncle Steve. I sadly lost two of those mentors. And they have taught me everything of how to be a good man, of how to be driven, of how to not just see the day for the day, but to see what the day leads to for the next day and then the next day and then for the next year. And I just hope to, to you guys that I pass that on. And that's largely a re lot of reasons why I try to offer up advice because it was passed to me and I just don't want to see it die with them. I want to see it passed on forever. I want to see, because I, I, like I said, with the writing, I hope it inspires people. That inspire so they so they in turn inspire more people so that's what i hope and that's the way i am now is I, I i don't try to i know i seem overbearing i know i seem talk like i'm self-centered when i make it about me when i'm i'm just trying to to show what happens when you strive to be the best, the best possible version of yourself every single day. Now can I, I know. Can I, I interrupt I you for a second? Can I interrupt uh, you for a second? Sure. I don't want you to put that on yourself. You bring value when you said when you say things like that. When you bring when you when you offer advice, it's valuable advice. You're not making about yourself. If you get in your head about how you're making it about yourself and you look like an asshole or you feel like an asshole, you aren't. You're you're bringing value. Your 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 point of view matters. Just like everybody deserves to be heard and seen, and everyone deserves love. You you deserve to love yourself just as much. Don't don't feel bad about giving that stuff because we love it. Anybody who loves you loves hearing that. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And I usually walk away from those things, situations, not just thinking that, but in the, of the, the other side of my brain going, I really hope that I did inspire them. And I really hope that, that they, they take that and make it their own. Right. Cause I don't want, to push to be have people be just like me like like you said before like the the whole look at look at the good things i have i don't do that to try to make you go oh well i want that too it's like i, I want you to like that's awesome i would like something of that caliber of quality for my own that fits me like you and your girlfriend now you're that mm -hmm. nice young lady mm -hmm. you guys fit right and that's fantastic because you know how many people today think they they try to fit but don't mm -hmm. uh, Sue and I watch the 90 day fiance thing. Mm -hmm. I watch it mostly to giggle at the people being dumb, but I really sit there and look at it. And I'm like, I'm watching these two people try to, they think they love each other over the internet and then they try to make it work. And it's just like, you're trying to mesh two completely different gears and the motor is going to, is just trying to go when you guys ain't moving. Mm -hmm. There's a, right now there's a couple on there girl from America who's a internet personality is down in Australia visiting her online girlfriend and she, the girlfriend in Australia is learning that the person she, the American is, is not the same as the internet personality. Mm -hmm. So it's the girl in Australia fell in love with the Facebook person and I Sue explained it to me as Let's say I, I fell in love with you as Omega Phoenix, and right. then I get to know you, and I see, well, why are you acting like, like Big Country when I love Omega Phoenix? Right. When Country is who and what I am. Right. So that's what Sue and I have, have, have learned to do, is we, we get along and we function, and we, it's not just that, but we mesh, and we, we, we fit each other's weirdness. Right. And that's what I'm glad to see you found. Because I, because I'm a firm believer that everybody deserves to be happy, and if you're not happy where you are, go to be where you can be happy. <laughs> I think, and like like I said, that I think everyone deserves to feel heard, and everyone deserves to feel seen and feel loved. I I think the way that you're wording a lot of things, you're never being braggadocious. You're never saying, look what I have, as in like, I've got so much and you suck because you can't get it. You have the idea that there's enough good to go around for everybody. We can all accomplish our dreams. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, the things that I want in life aren't the exact same things you want in your life exactly. or the person next to them or the person next to them. So it's like, we're, we all want different things. We all can get those things. So it's, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, you know, uh, just you're, you're, you're very, you're very like, come up here, come up here. It's more of a come up here, not a you're down there. I'm up here. You're like, it's come up here. The view's better up here. Come on. Right. There's a spot right here for right. you. That's not just because you're super tall, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, that, that's the same way I explain things to people in the gyms mm -hmm. and like a lot of young guys. I explain it as the human humans as a, as a whole are built off the same basic blueprint, but because of family lineage and heritage, we're all slightly different. Mm -hmm. So I'm built different from you, and you're built different from him, and she's built different from everybody else. Right. There's the body so types. Yeah. And so what I what I'm trying to pass on is fundamentals and techniques and foundation, and this is just applying to white room training for you to follow the to, to, to get what you want what yeah i'm not going to go on to farmer's meat or farmer's only yeah <laughs> that's not going to apply to me yeah <laughs> right the same, the, the same way i'm never going to end up on eHarmony because right. i i know for a fact i don't fit their qualifications right. so right. I'm, I'm not finding a, a girlfriend on blackpeoplemeat.com because <laughs> uh, they won't let they won't val <laughs> they're, they're not going to validate my con that my my profile <laughs> to quote a comedian you're neon white right <laughs> but uh w with that kind of being said all that stuff uh, you know let me let me back up to a thought that i was just having a minute ago before i get into this next thing how cool is it going to be that you know like when you 
watch like old home videos and you're in them. Oh yeah. And the, you're like, oh look, there's me when I was little. There's me when I was a baby. Right. <laughs> How cool is it going to be for Lizzie to listen back to this episode in 30 years and, and be like, that was me when I was a baby on that on that podcast. Oh my God, that's awesome. That's such a cool yeah. thought to think about. Because uh, uh, when I was, my older brother was six and I was five. Mm -hmm. We were visiting Charleston, uh, Charlestown down in uh, South Carolina, Charlestown Landing. And there's, if you've never been there, there's a giant wooden totem pole in the front of the, uh, the national park. And apparently the news was down there filming the view for the weather forecast. And somehow we had, were there at the exact same time. And the camera guy said, hey, you're a happy little family of four. Why don't you guys hop in there and we'll put you, in the, we'll, we'll put you on the news. And my dad, as soon as we got back to the hotel, he called my aunt and had her videotape the news clip. And we still have it today. <laughs> and, and I look back and I'm like, wow, oh, wow, I was tiny, wasn't I? <laughs> I never was a giant before. Oh, <laughs> you were, so, I wasn't a giant yet. <laughs> I did start small. See, kids, I told you I started small. <laughs> so, yes, what I, and that's that's what I was thinking too, as I'm down here with her, because I'm I'm because Sue's up there with our son, mm -hmm. and I figured I'd help by taking her with me down here. Right. And as we're getting into, it, I'm like, oh, okay, baby, you're going to be an internet star before you even know what the internet is. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, <laughs> I'm gonna try to spin this thing around right now. Okay. And and ask you if you have any like things that you've always wondered or wanted to ask me, and maybe you turn it into you interviewing me now because you know. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, how you guys been handling the the whole uh, quarantine thing? You guys been doing all good up there? Everybody's been safe. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's boring, but I, I mean, mean like, I'd rather be bored and alive than than active and tired. I mean, active true. and dead. Right. Because well, you because you know if you get sick, I'm going to drive up there and I'm going to. Visit you in the hospital, even though I got to beat up every cop to get in there. Well, look, I'm I'm healthy. I feel real good about how healthy I am. But I good. live I live across the street from my mother, who's not. She's you know she's got a compromised immune system. She's got MS. So I want if I want to visit her, I want to make sure I'm healthy too, because she's more. Her health is yes. more important through this, Wait. because the, I know people my age recover. I know yeah. people who've recovered already so it, yeah that's the way i'm kind of looking at it like i want to for the sake of my family yeah. uh stay stay as healthy as possible so when i go out you know i haven't gone out a lot but i've gone to a couple grocery stores and stuff just like everybody else has evident by the fact that there's no toilet paper or bread anywhere <laughs> it's all at your house yeah don't lie. don't lie it's all it's right it's behind the tapestry isn't it i got nothing <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm like bare minimum with everything, <laughs> but I put on gloves, put a bandana over my face for the sake of others. Yeah. For, it's not, it's not to protect me as much as it's to protect other people. Uh, but I get it. I get what the, I get what the, the, yeah. the scared is. I get what oh. the, the, the fright, the fright is about and the panic. And yeah. uh, th this is a time that no one's ever lived through before. So we don't know how to handle it. Yep. That that this country hasn't lived through in over a hundred years. Yeah, it's been since, like uh, one hundred and two years or something. Yeah, the Spanish flu of nineteen eighteen. That's the mm -hmm. last time this country has seen anything of this scale. Right. So now we've the way our grandparents had stories to pass down from that. Now we have stories to pass down from this. And sadly, the only thing we're going to have to really significantly pass down is Tiger King and a tan baby in the White House. Well. You know, imagine not having the internet through this. That's very true. Um, imagine not having think, Netflix. Well, most of us survived from before the internet was a thing. I don't know if most of us, but some of us. <laughs> I mean, a lot of us. Well, you and me at least. Right. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm, I'm luckier than most. I've got 100 acres to go out and play on and, and get stuff done. Yeah, so. but if we didn't have the internet, everybody would be everybody would be out uh, uh, starting a new library card. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like people would be taking people out books. Be and, out more so than they are right now. Right. 
So be a party at the library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but uh, but yeah, you and you guys are safe and yeah, we're doing that. great, man. We're, we're, we're doing pretty great. Your sister was already on time for you to join. This is my good friend Corey Castle. He's like a brother that I wish I had growing up. Hi. So this is Connor. What's up, Connor? Can you wave, bud? Can you wave? Can you go wave? No. Oh, you we, know. He get he he takes after his mother with the uh the shy thing. Yeah. So well, but, understood. I mean, not everybody not everybody's got a, a ginormous look at me hole in them like us. <laughs> Yeah, because if because if we didn't, we wouldn't wear spandex and go out in public. Right, right, exactly. I was the the second the last time I was out in West Virginia, I was hanging out with them guys out there, and I told them I said, "Look, well, we were talking about the wrestling business," and I said, "You know, we're a fistful of dollars away from being strippers." Right. And, and he turned to me and says, "What?" I said, "Well, we wear spangly outfits, we come out and play with poles, and we have entrance music." Right. Well, we're we're, we're 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 poorly paid strippers. <laughs> All we're missing is the G-strings and the dollar bills flying with the spinny lights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they and they the actually old guy in the front row. They probably actually have a better audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, a bigger audience. I don't want to say a better audience. Yeah, bigger, definitely bigger. Uh, they'll, a they'll bigger pull. audience. <laughs> well, they tend to be better looking than this. Oh so. yeah, well you know that's. You know that's you know that's a case by case basis probably <laughs> very well, very case like, like you said you're gonna get a comment you've always had that like video oh. quality face the what quality face the video quality face like like I could definitely see definitely see you getting like you said you've been, um, been on TV you've been in movies I mean you were on Gotham City right right yeah it was, yeah. It was just called Gotham okay but um. I haven't always had this face. I haven't always been uh, no, like really like I've been. I was always awkward. Like I was. I wasn't always. I took me a long time to get. Like I had these big thick glasses. I had a stupid haircut. I was like skinny fat for a good <laughs> portion of my fat. life. I was skinny fat for a good Trust portion me, of my skinny life. Skinny boys don't know the first thing about being fat. <laughs> right. Exactly. I didn't say I was fat because <laughs> that that would feel like skinny fat is you wake up going oh god i'm so puffy when you're wearing your 20 jeans right I, size 20 I've, jeans i've never worn a size 20 jeans in my life <laughs> maybe, maybe when i was four <laughs> but but yeah it, it's not i didn't i didn't like poof act become this yeah i was uh i was well, let me just say, let me just say, you were born with the good bone structure to get that. Right. Sure. Sure. I'll I'll take it. But that that's a problem I have with not accepting compliments. Like that's a that's a that's a me issue. Yeah. Um. I I don't want to. I don't want to be vain. I want to. I want to be humble. Oh yeah. And uh, Sue says I've got the same problem because somebody will give me a compliment. And I'll just try to dismiss it as, oh well, you know, it's I just try. Mm -hmm. Like, um, was talking to a friend of mine that I haven't seen in forever, and it was just trying, and I, and, and I chimed in on what she was talking about on Facebook, and she's like, oh, I already know you're like this and that. I'm like, yeah, I'm just figuring, I know, but I figured I'd chime in just to give you a smile. She's like, you did, you're a really good friend. I, I, I just try. Right. I Instead did, of just so going thanks. Instead of just going thanks, you'd like justify. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm guilty as charged. Yeah. That's me. I do that. Like, uh, someone says like you are good looking, and I'll be like, ah, stop. Like, like nah, don't, nah, right. no, nah, nah, right. nah, not me, no. Right, right. That, <laughs> it's 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 tough. It's tough. I get it. But I mean, uh, you know, it's a good thing I don't come to your comedy shows because I'd probably answer all your jokes. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were gonna say I'd go. Wah, wah. <laughs> no, I would try to steal the show with better jokes. Uh, well, just, uh, just get I'd, I'd probably sit back and go, "Oh, you call that a joke? Your mom, no." <laughs> Dude, what's the what's the stand up? I mean, after this whole thing's over, you got you got to see what the what the scene's like in in Maryland. Um, 
I mean, I know Louis G. Rich was doing it down there. Maybe when my when my little ones are a little older, like right. they're school age. Yeah. Um, like I'm limited on even bookings right now. Right. Before all this, I was like, I had just DCW, West Virginia, Totem, and I was just getting into uh, the um, I think it's Asylum. I think mm-hmm. it was. I was just starting to get up there. Was I was actually like... supposed to have a show with them this past Saturday. Hazelton. Uh, is that? I think so. It's the Crazy Shay Company. Oh, okay. Then I have no idea. Up there in Pennsylvania. Okay, I have no idea then. <laughs> um, hey, all I know is they paid me. That's all I cared about. Right. Um, I mean, I I honestly had one booking on the calendar, and uh, that got canceled. So, yeah. uh, I I'm like, I'm. I'm excited. I want to do. I want to do it when when the world comes back because I know things like little things will be over again. Like yeah. you'll get pops for arm drags, which okay. I I hip tosses been, will get at least an applaud. Right. Like my back misses hitting the ropes for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I I I to be honest, I feel like I've been right there with you for a little bit because the last. Actually, the last show I worked, I barely, I worked with, uh, a triple threat match, and I barely chimed in anything. Like the mm-hmm. last, this past couple of months, I just feel like, oh, well, uh, what do you want to do tonight? Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. When before, yep. and, and the greatest compliment I ever got, I got from RGP, because he sat there and listened to me put a match together, and he's like, wow, you're really good at this. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, your matches make sense. It's like, because I'm, like, I'm telling a story. Because you're that's that's the whole point. That's how I was taught. Right. When I first started, is you're the whole point of a match is you're telling a story. So, so I feel like Hey, listen here, pal. Sit under this sit under this learning tree for a minute. <laughs> I, I just feel like it's the same thing with my writing. My writing has stalled out the last couple of years, and I feel like just recently in wrestling, I've lost the spark for the storytelling. So I'm hoping that comes back. Like like you said, I'm hoping like the good things come back when, when everything gets back to them. Yeah. Relative. People will miss assembling. Yeah. Like, you know, miss people, people show. miss coming to shows and, and, uh, being entertained. Like we'll find, people, out, we'll find out who the real fans are. Yeah. People have only been entertained by tiger King and such for the last <laughs> couple of mo- couple months, weeks, whatever. And that Carol fucking baskets. Fucking that bitch. Carol Baskin. <laughs> Uh, Sue and I tried to watch the first episode and sat and the, the bad part is we tried to watch it at 10 o'clock at night while we're in bed and, and I'm, I'm halfway through the first episode. I'm like, I'm Googling. I'm like, there's no way this is real. There's no way this is real. And I'm like, Oh, oh shit. Documentary. Oh, 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 he really is in jail. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's funny, man. I, um, I just listened to a recent episode of, my friend Sozio has a podcast called Struggling with Sozio. Okay. Uh, and he had he had Ash on, my my former roommate. And at the end of it, at the end of the episode, he went, "Well, like, you know, for the, for the the price of like a, a shitty car or you know, the price of, you know, only $3,000. If you got $3,000 to pour into like like wrestling gear or you know, whatever the stuff you're pouring your money into, you could have bought a tiger. You could have bought a tiger. <laughs> A, we're learning nothing else from this quarantine. You could have bought a tiger. <laughs> could have bought a tiger instead of buying that brand new car or just or, take or paying just, rent. You could have bought a tiger. You could, you could take two of those Trump buck stimulus checks. <laughs> you could buy one tiger with two of those checks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my my sister in law, my little brother's wife. Mm-hmm. Who, she used to live in the same house where I lived with my parents for a while. And we would always watch the discovery channel and she's seeing all the cute little fuzzy animals going, Oh, it's so cute. I'm like, that's a polar bear. She's like, yeah, but it's, it's cute. I'm like, yeah, but cute grows up to eat you. Right. Did you, did you watch the whole tiger King series? Not yet. Not yet. We've been, uh, I've been, I've been trying to ease her back into it because she's, I, I'm curious now just to see where it goes, just because uh, I like a good story. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. 
<laughs> I've seen the memes. He goes to jail. I know. Right. No. Well, you've said that part already. Yeah. <laughs> um. So getting back to interviewing you for a second. Yeah. Yeah. How are you and that nice young lady doing anyway? You guys having a good, good thing so far? Yeah, man. I mean, it's still new. It's still new. We're we're we just uh, hit over five months. Like we're not awesome. still a pretty brand new relationship. So. Um, this is uh, quality time we're getting together, and it's it's oh, neat. Yeah. I mean, before this... this, we got to do a lot of really cool things. We got we created a lot of really good memories in the last five months. I mean, a lot yeah. of really cool things. So um, it's it's really great. I mean, oh, yeah. she's she's also a comedian. She's also a podcaster. She's <laughs> she's funny. So um, we just have a, a a lot of fun. And then you know you know that it's going to be a bad day when she wakes up and goes, "Nothing is funny today. Nothing." <laughs> right. We're we're like talking about something uh, earlier, and uh, and I was like, "Man, I'm bored of watching shows and stuff. Like, I feel like I've watched so much stuff, and like I, only so much more time I can stand in front of the TV." And I was like, "Oh, I want to play a game." And she's like, "No, I don't like games." And I was like, "How can you not like games? What are you talking about?" As I was coming down here to do this, she, Sue was setting up the Sega to go back to go play some Sonic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just we're just we're gonna be learning some stuff about each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but well, this is this is good. This is good because um, Sue and I lived. She I was in Delaware. She was out here in Maryland when we were dating. So it was a two-hour drive either way. Right. So our interactions were limited to the weekends. So we did as much as we could with the time we had on the weekends before I had to go back and go to work. Right. And when I was laid off in those times in the down periods in construction, I did my best to stay as close to her as I could. When we got married and we moved in together in Delaware, that first six months, we did hit a few really rough, rocky spots, but the time we spent together just cause I was, cause that was a, a really bad point. Cause I was laid off for mm -hmm. like, I'd been laid off for like two months before this mm -hmm. and I was laid off until the following spring. Cause just that's how construction goes. You have really good times. And then when it gets bad, it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. So it was rough because of, of that. But we also, like you said, hadn't started developing the great together times mm -hmm. because now we're together, we're together all the time. And now it's like, if, if she's away from me for too long, I feel like my right arm is missing. Like, I feel like this is and now when I have to go back to Delaware for extended periods of time to go to work, I feel like I get back to where I'm staying and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to be here. So, and then that's why whenever she comes out and I come home from work to the, to the trailer where I'm staying and she's there, I'm like, yay, home. Right. So, savor this. And... And build with it because right. I, I i personally didn't have that before we were married mm -hmm. so we we got married and then we then we had that and there's constantly times even now i still look back going god i, I wish i had you since high school i just i keep there's there's times when we'll be out on date night or we'll be having dinner together and i'll be like i'm sorry and she's like what for i said all the wasted years i don't have to give you mm -hmm. of all the bullshit years and, and she actually makes a good valid point we weren't ready way back then yeah that is i was because i was a completely different person in high school and she was a completely different person in high school and we've evolved your show evolved into who we are because of the shitty years and the lost years right it was, it's like you had to learn those lessons to be the person you are now yeah, to yes. be with the person you're with yeah I, to know that you're, totally you're get that. ready yeah. to deserve each other yeah so the way I wrap up every show, I don't know if you've heard me do this before, but no. uh, I will say, hypothetically, this show is yours now. Okay. So I've gifted you the show from now on. All right, hold on. Hey, Bob. Me my Excuse me? What's I gotta that? I got to put my tie on. Hold on. Evolving with big country. <laughs> this has been the pilot episode. Okay. The very first episode of your new podcast. In a Jerry Springer's final thought type of way. So <laughs> in you know 30 seconds to a minute, 
how do you wrap up the lessons learned and to inspire folks to maybe tune in next week? <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to quote something I just said to somebody the other day. There was uh, on one of the writing panels I follow a young author who's also an essential medical person. And she's talking about she feels like she's her dream is crumbling because she, she wants to be a writer. She's always wanted to be a writer and she doesn't have the time and she gets home and she's just dead physically. And any notes she takes, she loses. And and I try to to, to, to chime in as best as, as humbly as I could to offer a piece of advice, which tape recorders, they are amazing. I know I'm showing my age here, but tape recorders are the way to go. But I ended that little statement with the, the the good times will come again don't linger on the bed and stay focused and dreams will never die as long as you stay focused and driven so just doesn't matter where you are right now what whether you're in a good place in life or a really crappy place in life this is not your forever right good comes and so does bad but you cannot have one without the other mm -hmm. so just always remember that if you're in a good time savor because it may never last and if you're in a bad time don't lose heart don't lose faith because it's not permanent and it won't last forever as long as you strive forward and never let your dreams die love it that's what i've learned from my 30 some years on this planet of doing the best i can without screwing up significantly more than I've already screwed up in life and try to live by the lessons that were passed to me by the men who came before me. Well, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta screw up sometimes, man, and forgive yourself, forgive oh, yeah. yourself for, for your past screw ups because living, living for those right nows that are gone is going to waste all your right nows that are happening. Exactly. It's like quoting Batman now. Why do we fall mm -hmm. to learn to pick ourselves up? Yeah. And that's the only way you're going to learn is you have to, you have to have the, the strength to push yourself to do the thing where you might fall, but you only fall when you try to learn to get back up and try again. It's the same thing like applies for everything from writing, writing a book to learning to ride a horse or a bicycle or hell, even wrestling. How many times did we screw up in training and yeah, yeah uh, I, up and going, just try it? Going back to going back to the being good looking thing, um, I didn't. I wasn't always this, and uh, I'm a good wrestler now. But you should have saw me in 2005. I stunk, yeah. you know. Like it, it took. It takes a while. So, um, what's what did what did uh, Scott Hall say in his in his Hall of Fame speech? Oh God, um, oh, shit. That, such a good such a good line. Um, yeah. um, he said, I know the one you're talking about. Shit. So, um, he said, "Bad times don't last. Bad yeah. times don't last. Bad guys do." Just be, you know, just, just <laughs> stay, stay moving forward. Nope. Stay the course. Stay moving forward, and never give up. Because, because I use myself as a as a walking poster child for this. If I had done that first workout when I was 360 pounds and was like, fuck this. I wouldn't be where I'm at now. Right. I wouldn't be. Because as soon as I, I got better physically, I had I was working better matches. I was feeling better in my everyday life that I didn't realize I wasn't experiencing before. I think that it's a Vince Lombardi quote. He says, uh, only in the dictionary does uh, success come before work. Yep. So uh, I, I think about that pretty often. So uh, it could be, it, I could be quoting the wrong person, but it, the, the words are right. It sounds like Lombardi. Yeah. But I want to, I want to offer you, man. I want to offer you, if I can be any kind of good resource to you, if you need to talk to me about anything, please don't ever hesitate to call me. If, you know, anything is going on. You're never going to get any judgment from me. Judgment-free conversation all the time. Anybody who's listening, if this is your first time listening to the show, 
uh, please hit the subscribe button and know that, of course, what I just said to Big Country applies to you as well. If you're going through something and you feel like you're helpless or hopeless, you're not. You have two brothers right here to talk to. And yeah, we're not going to judge you. Not hard to get a hold of. Reach out I, to me. <laughs> I've told countless friends, and I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. There's a couch here. I've got a couch and a spare bed. Mm -hmm. Every, somebody needs it. So all you got to do is give me a holler. Great. Awesome. Well, love you, man. You too, bro. You're, you're a great dude, and uh, the world needs more of you. <laughs> needs more of both of us, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I hope you you stay safe during this whole thing and uh, continue to have fun as much as you possibly can oh, yeah. and keep I evolving. Lot, I got a lot of farm work ahead of me for the next couple of weeks. I got to get the guard. I got to get the garden ready. I got to get pastures good and go. I got to get hay fields ready. Mm. Hey. So. <laughs> yep. So. All right. Well. It or not, life does go on. So. It does. And what you have to do for it to go on is keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs> you keep evolving.